below there. Humans, bees, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. I'm Bushka. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about the Badger, the new tier 10. Well, controversial crate-ish tank thingamajiggy. I've never driven the, the Badger on PC. So look, what I'm going to do is come at it from a completely 100% um, unbiased opinion. And I think the tank is pretty remarkable for a variety of reasons, but not the least of which is that it is a uh, it's a very new take on an old theme. And it's a, it's a bold take on that theme, I'll be honest with you. It's a... If you wanted to paint whether it's too strong or too weak, it is exceptionally strong in certain situations. Uh, but it has the characteristic weaknesses of old school TDs in Blitz. It's not supremely mobile. There is just no way around this. In terms of mobility, it is very, very limited. Uh, it is running no no turret and can get up to 30 degrees of, tull, of, of traverse on its hull. But it's a big ass wide load of a tank. It actually reminds me a lot of a cross between a tortoise and something like an SU 12244. It has the same kind of gun as a tort, 123 millimeters versus 120. It doesn't have the hesh round that the tort has, but it's got a very accurate weapon with very good aim time and an incredibly strong armor profile. Like the armor profile on the tank is a baroque as broke can be. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of games in this. Uh, one of them, the second game that I'm gonna show you is specifically there to illustrate um, the kind of situation you wanna be putting the Badger in and where it really excels. Now, I'm not gonna negotiate through the... You guys have seen, if you've been watching it all, you've watched what I've been talking about over the last wee while and how I think that Wargaming has gone well down the path of pay to win on its premium tanks. Um, the last few iterations have been exceptionally strong and i don't like that uh i much rather these tanks were in tech trees i think that would be the way forward but they're not now the thing the badger has going for it is it's got very very good armor and it's got very good pen 280 millimeters of a p pen is an awful lot of pen to be having on a tank with this much armor profile but the the real key to the badger's performance is its gun depression it's got 10 degrees of gun depression. The reason I liken it to the Tortoise is because it's got very similar kind of numbers to the Tort. The Tort's got better DPM numbers, but it's got that feeling of Tortoise-like mobility. Like you can see, taking these two hits here because it's just so slow to get up and across is brutal. And that's really what finishes the game for me. It's, it's the reason I can't really get it up and win. But it's, it's also the on the move like whipping the gun around and just letting it go because you've got 280 millimeters of pen is very very important you've actually got nearly uh 370 well nearly you've got 370 millimeters of apcr so you've got pen for days now i run this tank i'll give you a quick idea on what i run equipment wise uh obviously the gun ram up the big thing that i do differently is i don't run the v stab i don't run a vertical stabilizer I run the refined gun and take the accuracy all the way down to uh, 0.272. I also run a camo net on the tank. I just think it's important that you um, maximize the time when people can't see you with this thing. But it's really important. I have never had so many frustrating games where I just get circle of death. And it's because its traverse at T-Rex is not enough. Uh, it really isn't enough. And the gun isn't intimidating enough to stop medium tanks who think they're going to take one shot on the way in. So it's got a 460 alpha 120 millimeter gun and 123 millimeters. Um, and that means that you are basically in a situation where if a medium is going to COD you, they only have to take one hit on the way in, 460, and then they're past you and you're dead. That's that's kind of how it is. And that's, that's why I'm using a camo net. I want to play it more from the back. Now, the big thing to talk about here is the armor profile. The Badger's armor profile is pretty crazy, in fact, for a tier 10 TD. It's, this is with the uh, IS Ford's AP, which is gonna give you 258 millimeters of pen. And you can see straight away, there is a lot of red there. Lots and lots of red. Now uh, you've got over 300 millimeters of armor on pretty much the entire upper glacis of the tank. Obviously it's low down the bottom, but it's not weak particularly, 221, 250. Uh, and it only really stays weak in that middle section there. And you can actually get it up to quite a large number 
if you angle the tank up savagely. The sides aren't weak either. They are auto bounce zones. They're so steeply uh, angled. And that's that's great. What about if we switched up to heat, which is one of the stronger heat rounds in the game for a heavy tank, is the ice force heat. And you can see, even then, these become penable. But if the tank is slightly angled and slightly elevated, because it has 10 degrees of gun depression, then it's incredibly harsh. Like, it is such a tough tank to pen. And that's why it really is about getting to hull down spots for the Badger. Because the weak points of the Badger are the typical weak points of any TD. Very, very poor mobility uh, and a lack of turret. And this particular spot is one of the greatest spots in the game for the Badger. Like This is an amazing area because you have so many tanks around you, like-minded tanks on your team, guarding your flanks. And uh, you can see it allows you to very much just dominate the mediums and the heavies in front of you. I was surprised at the variance. I thought when I got the tank that it was just incredibly strong and it was super OP and all that. And I, I still think it is very strong, but my numbers in it are just not that good. And I think a lot of it has got to do also with, I've just been unlucky with tanks. Uh, the tank performs regardless and you can see it again and again, but like I've had so many games like that game on, uh, on Canyon and the game you're about to see on Himmelsdorf where it, like, I'm just left, like, doing 3K, 4K, 5K, and everyone's dead. And that's all there is to it. And that's, I think if I played the tank for longer, my numbers would pop up and really start to shine. But there is a there is a real feel of a, a tort with it. The big difference between this and a tort for me is that the tort has way more uh, gun traverse. And that means that it's also got more DPM. Like this is going to be running at about 3.5k DPM, a total run closer to 4k than 3.5k. Or actually, it's like 3,800. The That's not a big difference, though, for this much armor. The thing the Tor can do really, really well is it gets 20 degrees either side of the gun in terms of traverse, which allows it to really post up hard. And if the Badger had 20 degrees of gun traverse as well as 10 degrees of gun depression, it would be stupid because it would be really, really easy for this tank to deal with incoming mediums and such. I've really not got the knack with the Badger yet of tracking medium tanks. You've got enough DPM if they're coming from far enough away that you can get a couple of shots in at a time. But uh, if they get to your sides, it's just, it's good night, nurse. It's a really tough gig. It's a fun tank to drive though. And I won't, I won't lie, I was very happy to drive it. But I, I drive it very aggressively now. I drive it not... Not unlike I drive a Fosh, but I'm more I, I feel more like I can rely on the armor and less like I can move around the battlefield. So what I try and do is actually take it towards heavy tanks, not mediums. Like the Fosh, you'll take it towards medium tanks. You want to take the Badger towards heavies because even with um, very good pen like that IS-4 pen, if you can just elevate that upper, upper glacis a little bit, the angles become preposterous. You can get 400 millimeters plus of armor, and that's just fantastic stuff as far as you're concerned as a Badger. And you can see I've got three tanks in front of me here. Uh, there's a 101 p who's got no business being in here, but that's fine. We've got a we've got a tank as well that's going to die for us up the back. I think we've got an IS-6 or something. And everyone else is just going to die. And this is the Badger to a T for me. Like, it's always the last tank left up like i feel and it reminds me a lot of playing blitz in the early days when there was just hordes of russian mediums running around the place um that is that is what it was like where you would be squirming and squealing around the joint in like a an object 268 or a jaegeru or a t110 e3 desperately trying to avoid one of the five object 140s or t62a's that was on the enemy team or the tier 9 t54s because you knew once they got past you you were absolutely gone you were dead in the water uh, and that is very much the play style that you're going to have with the badger i would i would expect that i will win more games with this tank as i play it more and i am going to play it more because i think it is well worth well worth playing and i this is again the ironic thing i hate crates like I, I i won't buy a crate but at the same time i feel like if you're buying a crate you should get value for money <laughs> so 
if you know how to angle a tank and you like playing aggressively and you don't mind uh, pushing into heavies and using your armor profile, this is a tank you're going to love. And if you are looking for a tank that is going to cost money, but you're actually going to get something that's way too strong, then... At tier 10, this is this is your go-to tank. This is your go-to crate tank. Like, there's no way around that. If this is like a 252U and a Smasher and a WZ120 and all that, like, this is the same style of tank that they've made again. It's, uh, it's very, very strong. And the sides are very, very strong in angles. Uh, that, is, that is, without a doubt, something that you are going to come up and realize as you run into this tank, the sides of it, when it's angled up sideways, it is really, really hard to pen. Uh, it, it can maintain an auto-bounce zone for quite some time. It will spit out a lot of damage. It's got good DPM, it's got good armor, and it's got gun depression. And if you can find places to go hull down, like you saw on this Himmelsdorf map and on Port Bay, you are going to kick seven shades of ass. It is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you're going to Tank Fest, look me up. I'll be there. I'll be uh, poking and toking and smoking away. Uh, having a good old time. I hate how auto-aim tracks to other tanks. But, you know, let's be honest. I was done. Until next time. Walk the dog. <laughs> be nice to your mum and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.